We're here with Bryant Priester from Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. And we're going to wrap up our conversation today by getting some additional information and maybe a little bit of advice from Bryant. Okay. okay. So, Bryant, about 17% of Purdue's undergraduate students are international which uh, gives Purdue one of the largest international undergraduate populations in the U.S. Um, does the university want to see that number of, of international students um, grow, shrink, stay the same, and why? <laughs> I, I think, you know, as we look at, you know, our international student enrollment at Purdue, it's, it's as I mentioned earlier, it's about balancing the facilities, the services, um, because right currently we're educating the most international full-time degree seeking students in the United States. And we want to continue to offer a positive Boilermaker experience for any student who decides to come study at Purdue. Mm -hmm. And the enrollment numbers that we've decided upon allows for us to do that in such a large scale manner. Mm -hmm. So I anticipate our numbers will remain the same. Um, and if there's extra capacity, we will welcome more international students to West Lafayette in the future, so. We've you know, made it known that this course is not going to include a financial aid component. Right. But can you briefly discuss Purdue's financial aid policy for international students? Absolutely. For our foreign citizens um, at Purdue, we do not offer scholarships the first year um, students are on our campus, uh, mainly because we're state-supported public institution. Um, after the first year, our foreign students are eligible to receive merit aid scholarship, but it will be based on their academic performance once they're on campus. And the, the aid that students can receive, it's, it's major or school specific. Um, and, and as I mentioned, it's small. So if a student absolutely needs you know, financial aid or scholarship in order to attend Purdue, I tell them not to rely on that as a means of coming to Purdue as a freshman. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, Purdue offers many high quality, world recognized programs and we're significantly cheaper um, than many of in many other options just depending on where we are in the United States and, 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 and other factors. So I tell students look at the comprehensive cost of coming to Purdue versus your other choices before in order to make an informed decision about which would be the best place for you to study. Mm -hmm. So currently Purdue with everything involved, we're about forty-five to forty-eight thousand dollars, and that includes tuition, room board, books, um, insurance costs, everything um, for for students. And some students, as, uh, and our students have determined in terms of what they can get in terms of that, and also being a part of an alumni club of four hundred twenty-five thousand alums around the world. That that's a value for them, you know, as part of you know graduating with a Purdue degree. Bryant, now maybe you can share a little bit of advice based on your experience in admission. Um, so in your opinion, mm -hmm. is there one mistake or, or common mistakes that international students make when applying to U.S. universities? Um, and if so, what is that mistake and, and how would you advise that a student can fix it? Absolutely. Um, to use your word mistake, mm -hmm. I would say that, you know, something that I've seen students do a lot is, you know, in, in reference to questions specifically to, to me or mm -hmm. to my staff, they will usually start with, well, my friend told me. <laughs> and I tell students, you know, it's your job to make sure you have the most accurate information about the university that you're applying to. Mm -hmm. And your friend could have been at the university 5, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Institutions are dynamic places, and policies change on a yearly basis. For example, our English proficiency um, requirements completely change from this year, from the previous year. So it's up to the students to make sure that they get the most accurate information, either through the website or contact us directly. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily relying, you know, on their friend, you know, for mm -hmm. specific policy detail about applying. Mm -hmm. Use your friend to know about, you know, other tangible, intangible aspects like social life or where to eat those sort of things. But for more policy-related information, you really should contact an admissions professional. 
Um, the second thing I would tell students is mm -hmm. do not rely on others to manage your application for the university. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in general, I generally don't have a lot of sympathy for that mm -hmm. for students who, you know, whose application is incomplete or they didn't know that they were missing materials or that they, that, you know, um, that they needed to pay a deposit mm -hmm. by a specific deadline. Mm -hmm. It's your application, your name is on it, presumably, an activity, it's your record, you should make sure that you are aware of all of the deadlines and the dates and make sure that any additional information or anything that's required of the application is submitted in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So those are generally the two things that I think are very important when talking to students. And uh, similarly, mm -hmm. and as the final question for today, okay. um, is there one piece of advice that you would like to share with the international students, you know, taking this course or the international students who are thinking about applying to a U.S. university? Absolutely. I would say that one of the beauty of being in the United States is, you know, you have 4,000 institutions of higher education to choose from and you know you've given the opportunity to showcase a, a very small number <laughs> mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. um, institutions um, we every school does things slightly different mm -hmm. slightly differently so um, it's important to sort of do your homework in, in, in figuring out what is the best place for you for example I did not do my undergraduate degree at Purdue but in the end, I went to the best school that gave me the best education for what I wanted when I was in high school. And that is what it's ultimately about, finding the best school for you. Um, because if you go to a school that you probably know more about, but they're not preparing you academically, you're not going to be, you, you're not going to have that experience that's going to make you successful. Because that's the purpose of college, is to provide you with the opportunity to participate in any economy when you leave. So that is my advice to students, you know. Um, f go to, you know, some students, it's, it's a gut feeling. They know this is the place that I really want to be. Mm -hmm. For other students, it has to be more of a strategic, data-driven approach, you know. That's what the job of professionals, admissions professionals like me, is to help you provide that information, you know. I would love for every student who admitted come to Purdue but you know, in reality, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you know, my job is to make sure that you have all the tools necessary in order to make the most informed decision about whatever school that you want to attend. Right. Well, that's that's great advice, and uh, thank you for sharing it. And we want to thank you for taking the time to to speak with us today and to answer all of these questions. Well, thank you for allowing me to be here. And students, you can find information on how to connect with Purdue University on the course site.